The Philippines is a Southeast Asian archipelago located in the Western Pacific Ocean, surrounded by different countries such as China, Taiwan, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and just like most Asian countries, you can find a lot of superstitions here. Some of these stories are similar to other stories in Asia or the rest of the world, while other stories and ghosts are solely found in the Philippines, and let me tell you, these entities will give you the chills when you encounter them. From harmful spirits that can detach their limbs, to shape-shifting monster-like ghosts, the Philippines have no shortage of scary stories with these entities around. In the past, Filipinos have seen their share of occupation. In the year 1521 the Spanish arrived, and they have been occupied by the Spanish conquistadors for approximately 333 years. In fact, the country was actually named after King Philip II of Spain. After the Spanish occupation, the United States took control of the land and the country became an American colony. Around the end of the American colonization, during the Second World War, the Philippines were occupied by the Japanese, from 1942 to 1945, until it finally gained independence in 1946. These periods of colonization have significantly impacted the country's superstitions and belief systems. During the Spanish colonization, there was a blending of indigenous animistic beliefs with Catholicism, while the presence of the U.S. military, especially during the Cold War era, exposed the country to Western culture and ideas. Nowadays, bustling high-tech cities are full of traffic and congestion, but if you want to know more about the ghosts and folklore, you can best take a trip to the rural farmland areas, where the local culture is preserved well. For a Filipino it is not uncommon to hear about urban legends and ghost stories from a family member or friend. To this day, the country remains very spiritual, and the belief in ghosts and hauntings is still very active. Let's dive a bit deeper into these ghosts. Welcome to the Glimp. The Filipino term for a ghost is multo, which is derived from the Spanish word muerto, meaning dead, or it is also called an espirito, which is derived from the word spirit. Most of the ghosts are seen as the soul of a deceased person that has made its return to the mortal world, sometimes to finish an incomplete task or promise, or other times to take revenge. Reasons can vary from an improper burial to an unusual dead, like suicide, but there are also other reasons why a ghost comes back to the mortal world. Let's list some of the types of ghosts and spirits you can find in the Philippines. Mananango The Mananango is a famous ghost in the Philippines, known for a very particular reason. The name of this ghost literally means, to separate or, to remove, in Tagalog, one of the major languages spoken in the country. And as the name suggests, this ghost is able to sever its upper torso from its lower body, and then fly around. She is depicted as a beautiful woman during the day, but don't let that fool you, because during the night time you don't want to encounter her, as this is the time she will sever her upper torso, and transform into this huge bat-like creature with sharp claws. Especially not when you are a pregnant woman, the meal of her choice. She loves to eat human flesh and blood, and uses her long tongue to reach into the womb of a pregnant woman, for then to feed on the fetus, blood or organs. While she is doing this, her lower body is left defenseless, and in some stories, it is said that the lower half is vulnerable to salt, garlic or ash. And when you put one of these substances on the lower torso, it will prevent her from reattaching and becoming whole again. This ghost is often associated with secluded or isolated areas where the night is darker, and to prevent encountering her, some people think it helps to always have a light on. The Mananangal is not confined to a specific region, and different provinces in the country have their own variations of the Mananangal, but one thing all the stories of this ghost have in common, and that is that no person ever wants to encounter her. Tikbalang 
Another famous ghost from the Philippines is known as the Tikbalang, a creature said to lurk in the mountains and rainforests, and let me tell you, this is not just a regular looking ghost. The Tikbalang is a human-like ghost, but with the head of a horse and very long limbs and hooves. It can even shape-shift into a full horse, to avoid detection. As horses are not native to the Philippines, and were only introduced upon the arrival of the Spanish, it is believed that the horse-like appearance developed during the colonial era, when horses became more widespread in the country. But the concept of the Tikbalang is much older. Another theory suggests that the horse-like appearance may have been influenced by the images of the Hindi deity, Hayagriva, as Hinduism was one of the religions practiced before the colonial era. Encountering a Tikbalang is often considered an omen. Some beliefs suggest that seeing the creature may bring good or bad luck, depending on the circumstances. Like a lot of ghosts from around the world, the Tikbalang is known for its trickster-like nature. It is said to play pranks on travelers, and often leads them astray in the deep forests or mountains, leaving people lost. One way to stop the Tikbalang from doing this, is to turn your shirt inside out, which is a practice used to ward of specific ghosts in other countries as well. In other stories, the Tikbalang is said to have the power to induce nightmares or create illusions. Individuals who have encountered a Tikbalang, might experience unsettling dreams or visions. In more malicious stories, the Tikbalang outright attacks people, and in some cases he even eats them. And if you're a female, an even worse thing can happen, as the ghost will rape you before devouring you. It is said that this is the way that the ghost reproduces. While the Tikbalang can be mischievous or harmful, it is also considered to be a guardian of the nature, said to protect the natural environment and the creatures that inhabit it. In some regions, people leave offerings such as food or tokens of respect and they enter the Tikbalang's territory. This is believed to appease the creature and avoid any harm it might cause. Tianak Just like the Tuyul from Indonesia, the Tianak is a ghost in the form of a newborn baby. But unlike the Indonesian Tuyul, the Tianak can't be kept in a jar, and definitely doesn't bring any good luck to the people who find it, as the baby appearance is just a disguise. This creature is known for its deceptive tactics, luring unsuspecting people into its clutches. It disguises itself as an abandoned baby in the forest, and cries loudly to attract people. Most local people will know it is a bait, but sometimes an unknowing person picks up the baby. And once it is picked up it sheds its disguise like a snake shedding its skin, revealing its true form, for then to kill the unlucky victim by biting and mauling. There are various stories of how these Tianaks came to being, the original story says that the Tianak is the spirit of a baby whose mother died during birth. But after the Spanish arrived, the Tianak was integrated into Christianity. In this altered version of the story, it is said that Tianaks are babies who died before they were baptized, for instance during abortion. After death, they go to a place known as Limbo, where unbaptized dead people fall into, and then transform into evil spirits. Sometimes it is said they come back to the mortal world to take revenge on their mother, or family. The Catholic Church was known to have made use of this story to encourage parents to have their children baptized. Caparosa A caparosa is a female type of ghost, dressed in a white dress or garment, and they are found in many countries around the world. You might know her as a white lady. The English name for this ghost is commonly used instead of the local one because its popularity reached its peak during the American occupation in the Philippines, which is why we rarely see her depicted in a traditional Filipiniana dress. Nowadays in the Philippines, the stories around these ghosts still are very popular and are often used to convey horror and mystery to young children. The most prominent one is the White Lady of Belit Drive, in Quezon City. 
The legend says that she died in a car accident while driving along Belit Drive, and her stories are frequently told by taxi drivers doing the graveyard shift. For instance that when a taxi crosses Belit Drive, a stunning woman asks for a ride. Then the taxi driver looks in his mirror and sees the woman's face without eyes, nose or mouth, full of blood and bruises, causing him to abandon his taxi in fear. In other stories, it is said that when an individual drives on that road in the early morning, they briefly see the face of a white-clad woman in their mirror before she quickly vanishes. Some accidents on this road are blamed on apparitions of the white lady. The white woman is an international phenomenon with varying tales and descriptions, but some things most of these stories have in common is an accidental death, murder, or suicide. And the themes of loss and betrayal usually play a big role in the story. Sigbin The Sigbin is a unique type of nocturnal ghost in the Philippines, mostly known in the Visayas Islands and Mindanao, especially in the rural areas. It is said to dwell in the forests in the south of the country. While it is considered to be a supernatural entity, often it is believed that families keep a Sigbin as a pet. It is a dog-slash-goat-like creature that walks backwards, and it is only visible to its owner. The Sigbin only eats raw meat, preferably bloody and freshly slaughtered, but if it can't have this, it will suck your blood through your shadow. It is said that the Sigbin emits a terrible smell, similar to a rotting corpse, from all the raw meat it eats, and that even though other people may not see it, they will most likely smell it. The legend goes that when you keep one of them as a pet, it will be your guardian, protecting you from danger, bringing you good luck, and sometimes they will even let you ride them, although when you do ride one of them, to other people you will appear as if you are walking in a very odd way. But there is another side to the Sig Bin, if you let him starve and don't feed him well, it will turn on you, attack, and eat you and your family. What is it about these ghost stories that fascinates us so much? Is it the same curiosity that leads some of us to stop at the sight of an accident, secretly wishing to see sprawled bodies? Perhaps we are so interested in these ghost stories because we want a glimpse to the past, or because we want to believe that there is more than the tangible. We tell these stories to make sense of shapes we see in the dark, or voices we can't trace back to anyone, and even though a lot of these stories are scary, we still find peace in having answers to the unknown. If you have a suggestion on what country's ghost stories I should cover next, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next documentary.